Thank you, Speaker. We won't be having such a difficult debate if Singaporeans, especially the middle class Singaporeans, are not asked to pay more taxes. So I have two questions first to, uh, for clarification. I have a total of six questions. I hope um, the, the speaker will allow me to ask all the six questions. But let me ask two questions first. I have uh, given a number of the tax burden of the GST on the middle class to be $1.2 billion. So take away all the uh, uh, compensating packages that you are going to give them. Um, divide the taxpayers into three groups. Top 20%, the middle class who will not get permanent vouchers, and those taxpayers who will get permanent vouchers, what is, how is the $3 billion or $3.5 billion additional GST is going to spread over these three groups? First question one. Question two, PSP hasn't been talking a lot about alternative sources of revenue because we think there is a lot of justification to make use of the unutilized revenues. But if you look at alternative avenues, actually it's very easy from our point of view. Second question, if you have to choose between a 2% GST hike and a 3 to 4% personal income tax hike on the top 10%, they will yield about the same amount of revenue. Would you still choose the GST 2% hike? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me answer the second question first, because it's quite straightforward. The sums don't add up, Mr. Leong. The sums don't add up. A 2 to 3 percent percentage point increase in the top personal income tax rate will never get anywhere close to the revenue we get from a 2 percent increase in GST. It will not. So you, there's, there's no choice here, right? In fact, we are already raising the personal income tax rates in this budget. We get some money from it, but it's not enough, and that's why the GST increase is needed. But as I've repeatedly said, the objections to GST on the basis that it hurts the poor are completely unfounded. You may disagree with the GST, fine, but do not use that as a reason for disagreeing with GST. There is no basis for that in Singapore. So stop pretending that this is the reason. On the first question, impact of the middle class, I, I know what you're trying to do with your computations, um, but I have shown in my chart and in my speech a different way of showing it, which is the share of GST paid by the different groups. And you can see from that, the chart, the chart is self-explanatory, the middle 20%, the share burden that they pay for GST, the increase in GST comes down, right? So the, effectively what it means is that the increase in GST, the $3.5 billion of revenues that GST generates, that 2% of GST generates, will be borne by the upper middle and the top income earners. That's what it comes down to. It shows in that effective rate chart where you saw when we stacked up the effective GST rates and we showed the increase in GST to 9%, that extra burden is all borne by the upper income deciles, upper middle and top end. And that's, that's exactly how we have designed the system. It is that group that will bear the burden of the GST increase while the rest of the population pay the GST rate, but the impact of GST expenses are offset on a continuing basis. And that's why we can have the confidence of implementing a consumption tax in Singapore that is fair, that is effective, and doesn't hurt the poor. Speaker, thank you. Minister, I think you didn't answer my question. After all, someone has to pay for the $3 billion or $3.5 billion GST. 
So I'm asking you, what is the tax burden on the different groups of Singaporeans? You cannot say there's no increase in tax burden. Secondly, on the income tax, can I ask the, uh, 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 the minister then, what is the total taxable income attributable to the top 10%? 10%? I can tell you that 4%, 3% increase in the income tax on the top 10% will yield $3 billion. What is the total uh, taxable income? Thank you. Well, Mr. Leong and Mr. Speaker, beg your pardon. I have to defer with Mr. Leong. I do not intend to get into a, a debate on figures with him. If he thinks that me and all my MOF officers know less about revenues than him, that's his, I mean, you are entitled to take that view. I do not wish to uh, entertain or continue the debate further when we are not even able to. And if you are unable to accept facts which I have put out, and you say that that's wrong, I don't know how to debate any further. Because then what are we debating about? You are unable even to accept an authoritative fact from the Minister of Finance, and you say it's wrong. So what's the point of continuing the debate on facts and data if you do not accept the figures which I've put out on the personal income tax? I've already explained that it does not yield that figure. Just look at the revenue generated from the tax change we have just introduced in this budget. It's nowhere in the region of billions, nowhere. So I can only say the facts that you have are wrong and it should not form the basis for public policy. On the first question, I've in fact answered it. I did not say that there's no increase in burden. Please do not take, you know, distort what I said. Listen to what I said carefully. I said the burden is borne by the upper middle and top end, and it's reflected in the chart, and we will be able to circulate the chart after this, put it out on the website, and Mr. Leong can have all the time in the world to analyze the figures and internalize them. Thank you, sir.